crew now headed for the elevator that will take them down to the first floor where they'll board the Astro van for the 20 minute ride out to Pad B. The commander and the pilot, Commander Shriver and Pilot Charlie Bolden, Bruce McCandler. And members of the support team that will be going out. Standing by now for a go for auto sequence start. T minus 33. What has happened is the ground launch sequencer would not hand off to the orbiter's computers to complete the count because the liquid oxygen fill and drain valve was showing off when it should be on. T minus 10, go for main engine start. We are go for main engine start, T minus six, five, four, three, two, one, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery with the Hubble Space Telescope, our window on the universe. Mission Control Houston. Roll program. Roger roll, Discovery. The roll maneuver puts the vehicle in the proper launch plane. Guidance officer confirms a good roll maneuver. Engines now throttling back. Thanks, Lauren. When fully deployed, both of the arrays together produce about 6,000 volts, about half of which uh, is required to operate telescope systems, and during the daylight side of the pass, the other half is uh, used to recharge the six nickel hydrogen batteries. Shift Supervisor Pete Patero just uh, checking with uh, his control team, receiving a report that uh, from the ground, as confirmed by the crew from orbit, the uh, deploy activity so far is going very smoothly. Uh, we see uh, no indications of any problems at this time. Landing gear is down and locked. Landing gear touchdown. Nose gear touchdown. Discovery rolls out on runway 22 at Edwards at the end of uh, mission STS-31 after traveling 2,068,213 statute miles on this mission. 
mechanical systems officer reports steady braking. The normal amount of braking is about 8 to 10 feet per second. And uh, this detailed test objective today is designed to be a light braking or low energy braking to try out the new carbon brakes. Wheel stop. Houston Discovery, wheel stop. Roger that, Discovery. Welcome back. Congratulations on a super mission, and the world is looking forward to reaping the benefits of your good work over the next 15 years. Welcome back, guys, and we have no post-landing deltas. and it's like a welding torch going off when the SRBs light. Uh, KT got to look out the overhead windows, and uh, I think that was pretty spectacular, too. It looked like uh, daylight behind us on the pad, and, it, and uh, I could follow it for maybe 20 seconds before it, it went into just light, just fire behind us. The, uh, the vibrations and the, uh, the roar is uh, pretty much the same as in the daytime. Uh, probably the big difference is up when you get towards SRB SEP, when the rockets go off to separate those boosters, it really flashes outside the, the windows, and it gives me a, a thrill just seeing that right there. <laughs> I tried um, to warn these guys. <laughs> yeah, Cubby warned us, but it was still exciting.
have a go for engine start. Five, four, three, two, one. Ignition and liftoff. Discovery now on its way to service NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. Houston now controlling. We're all programmed, Houston. Roger all, Discovery. Roll maneuver is complete aboard Discovery. The vehicle's now in a heads-down position on course for a 28 and a half degree, 309 nautical mile orbit. Three main engines uh, beginning to throttle down now as the orbiter prepares to pass through the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower atmosphere. The three engines now at 67% of rated thrust. The solid rocket boosters beginning to uh, tail off with their chamber pressure standing by for burnout and separation of the uh, twin solid rocket boosters. and see that everything's okay, the solid rocket motors are ignited. Here's the view inside the cockpit at SRB ignition, and you can see a lot of shaking going on. Looks a little bit slow uh, coming off the pad, but there's nothing slow about it. The things that come to my mind are power and speed. Here's a uh, beautiful view of the orbiter. You can see here it gets pretty hot down at the bottom of the external tank, but the insulation does a really good job. About uh, two minutes after liftoff, the solid rocket motors come off. Here's a, uh, obviously an external view.
Closure. Uh, we're stalling minus 0.05 at 151 feet. Okay, I just don't want to see the numbers get bigger. Okay, we are opening now, 155. Okay. I'm going to try to shoot one off the bottom just to see if it'll okay, take. Okay, I see you set up with body vector you, 5, pitch of 27, yaw 0, omicron 0. Uh, and I agree with that for a plus body yaw. Hey, Houston, Atlantis, we have the uh, telescope in the uh, RMS in the sector. Reggie, we copy, and uh, we're pulling down uh, KU right now, and we see that. Thank you. And the grapple fixture uh, now in view. Megan MacArthur now uh, repositioning the uh, shuttle's robotic arm to align with the grapple fixture on the telescope. Uh, Space Shuttle Atlantis, uh, all of its thruster jets have been inhibited. It's in free drift. Houston Atlantis. Hubble has arrived on board Atlantis with the arm. Atlantis Houston, we copy. Nice job, uh, Megan. Nice job on the Proxop flying as well. It's great to be back with the telescope. Okay, thanks, Dan. Everybody's uh, very excited up here, I can tell you. Yeah, I'm just looking out the window here, and it's an unbelievably beautiful sight. Uh, amazingly, the exterior of Hubble, an old man of 19 years in space, still looks in fantastic shape. We copy that. Thanks for those words. That was exciting. Well, you said the it was challenges be, there. You said it was a little fast. Is that right? We came in. Uh, we had kind of uh, a little extra closure, a little out of plane maneuvering. Uh, yeah. Trying to get up to the telescope, had to do some braking, and then the telescope wasn't rotated uh, for us. We had to wait. It was good. It went yeah. uh, just like clockwork. All right, well, that's great. Okay, John, you can open the thermal cover. Okay, I'm working on tabs. Open mass. This is great, John. We see you coming out. Uh, you can egress. Coming out. Ready, Drew? I'm ready, John. Let's go do this. Oh, this is fantastic. You're going to love it, Drew. Looks nice. Thermal cold over is open mass. This is great, John. We see you coming out. Yeah, you guys look great. Drew, you look awesome. You can see the reflection of the earth in your visor. It's awesome. Fantastic. 
Fantastic. I guess before we break the A latch, which is a game ending activity, so we ought to try that short adjustable. Okay, here we go. I think I got it. It turned, it definitely turned. Yep, it turned. Good news from the stock. Lightness test on uh, Whitefield 3 is good. Hooray! Oh, awesome. That's awesome news, Dan. Thanks. These guys did a great job, and we appreciate all the great support we got from the ground. In uh, traditional Hubble fashion, Hubble threw us a few curves, and I think it's really a testament to the whole team that we were able to overcome them, and that we have a Whitefield Camera 3 in the telescope, which will help to unlock the secrets of the universe and a new scientific instrument command and data handling. Mike Massimino's reflection uh, in the aft shroud of the Hubble Space Telescope uh, as he uh, prepares to uh, open the doors, uh, protective doors over the fixed head star trackers and the rate sensor units. And now looking from the opposite uh, helmet cam, this view from Michael Good looking into the telescope at uh, Mike Massimino. Hey, Mike, I got it. All yours. Very nice. Good job. Michael Good now uh, seating the new rate sensor unit. Nice job. Planet Houston for EVA, we have a good aliveness test in RSU-2R. You have a go for RSU-3, change out. And we copy, go for RSU-3. Four and a quarter on 13, Drew. Massimino has engaged all of the bolts on the old battery module, the uh, first five bolts on the new module, uh, securing it to the bay two door had been engaged. Megan, we can move to away from the telescope and start right. Copy, coming away. Got that door, John? I've got this door. Okay, you guys know the drill. Let's remove CoStar. Installed back in December 1993 to uh, correct the uh, spherical aberration that was detected in the telescope's uh, mirrors after its initial deploy in 1990. Yeah. Guys, you guys missed uh, Australia during the night pass, but uh, we should be coming up on Hawaii off on our left here in just a moment. You're very cruel, boy. No, a very cruel guy. Didn't know that about you. And for you, John, you should be looking at ACS. Yeah, I can see Hawaii. Can you really? Yeah, that's awesome. The uh, fastener capture plate now removed, having done its job of uh, capturing uh, the 32 tiny screws inside uh, the uh, protective uh, enclosure. Card one is out. Nice. I heard that. Thank you. Great, John. Nice job. Nice job, John. Takes a few more turns to get it out of the uh, connector. Not that it matters. Scooter, are you taking them back to the telescope? Yeah, I was. Okay, good. That was for the I tape. Don't bend too long. <laughs> right. That was for a point, and we bent over, and I thought I was going to drive him into the. Uh, the W side. Okay, Drew, I'm having trouble with this one on the lower right. I don't want to strip the thing. That darn handrail. Sunset in 11 minutes. Houston, you ready for this? Yeah, we're ready. Okay, man, you have a go. Here we go. Ready to maneuver, Tom? Ready to maneuver, Megan. Here we go. Wayne, I'm headed for the bat. Copy. And Houston, are you happy with the uh, wireless views? Venice Houston, we're happy with those views. Thanks. Okay, coming out. Now you're out of the lift of the telescope. Mirror's got about six inches to go. You are clear to uh, continue and increase the rate out. Yep, you can clear. increase the rate, Megan. Copy, picking up the rate. Uh, what a beautiful view. John, I'm the witness on this. You actually were the last guy to, to pat it goodbye. 
What were you thinking when you patted Hubble goodbye? What was going through your mind? Happy voyages. I hope everything that we did worked. <laughs> <laughs> hard not to think of Hubble as something alive, yeah. uh, but you know, I really was thinking of Hubble as a friend. I'm gonna select Five seven, seconds, the mode switch is in auto. Yes. Three, two, one, release. I'm backing away. I see you got an open. Clear the pin. Clear the pin. Mode switch is in off. Clear the antenna. Okay, I need the mic. Oh, baby, look at that. And he's the Atlantis with the Zep 1 burn, uh, MET 1857. 24 feet. Okay, is that the key? Keel camera on monitor 2 for me? 28. The actual monitor 2. With center of HS3, bottom half of Keel scooter inertial. 31. There it is, scooter. Okay. 35. Thank you. Opening. It's supposed to be at a ref ball of about 65. You said 35 opening. Yep. Do you have a H dot? Yeah, it's about 65 of the ref ball. This is a, a really tremendous adventure that we've been on, a very challenging mission. Hubble isn't just a satellite. It's about humanity's quest for knowledge. As Arthur C. Clark says, the only way of finding the limits of the possible is by going beyond them into the impossible. And on this mission, we tried some things that many people said was impossible, fixing stiff, repairing ACS, achieving all the content that we have in this mission. But we've achieved that, and we wish Hubble the very best. It's really a sign of the great country that we live in that we're able to do things like this on a marvelous spaceship like Space Shuttle Atlantis. And I'm convinced that if we can solve problems like repairing Hubble, getting to space, doing the surfacing we do, traveling 17,500 miles an hour around the Earth, that we can achieve other great things like solving our energy problems and our climate problems, all things that are in the middle of NASA's prime and core values. I want to wish Hubble its own set of adventures and with the new instruments we've installed that it may unlock further mysteries of the universe. We had no clue that Hubble would um, would result in in you know the the incredible advances that it's made in our understanding of our universe. None of us thought that people would be rewriting textbooks the way that they continue to do even today. We now understand much more about our universe than we ever would have known had it not been for Hubble. Uh, that we have um, not only young people, students, but now professionals who have grown up with Hubble and who have had Hubble change their lives and change their minds about about careers because they saw a Hubble image and decided that, you know, I don't really think I like science, but I think I want to try it. We saw the first light images and to the amateur, like me, it looked great because we had made this great discovery right off the bat. What we thought was a single star turned out to be a binary star. Um, and, and we were looking at a star that astronomers had been studying for hundreds of years. When we learn that, no, it's not really that good an image, it's, it's kind of blurred because we have this thing called a spherical aberration. We were crushed. We refuse to say no, refuse to say we'll give up, refuse to say we failed. And uh, with, with a number of subsequent servicing missions, we turned Hubble uh, from a potential failure to what is today the most incredible instrument that humanity has known uh, to this time. Hubble uh, kind of rewrote the textbooks. We now have the next of the great observatories that's scheduled to launch in 2018, uh, the James Webb Space Telescope. 
James Webb is uh, projected to dwarf Hubble in its discoveries and its ability to to look out into the universe and and peer into the the atmospheres of, of distant planets. America loves discovery. We just, that's in our national DNA. When Lewis and Clark was sent out on their expedition by a president of the United States, it was called discovery. And that's when we send out our astronauts. That's when we've now sent out a space telescope. Hubble did not hoard the information. Hubble shared the information, not only with brilliant scientists, but with school children. I listened and watched school children in our own country and around the world feel that they had developed a personal relationship with Hubble. Hubble had its own website, and it heard from scientists, and it heard from the school kids. And then we heard that the American people supported the Hubble. I was there when they battened down the Hubble for, and we said goodbye as it went on its final journey. But we knew it wouldn't be its final broadcast back to us. The Hubble's out there now. It's going to keep going for a long time. You know, that cold question, are we there yet? The answer is no. And then. on the famous press conference of June 27th, 1990, where I had the unique honor of explaining to the American people in the press that Hubble wouldn't be doing the science we had promised. And that was a horrific experience, to say the least. The, the press was not too receptive, even though at the end of the press conference I said, we do have a fix in mind. There is a way. Smart people finally figured out that what we had was sheer collaboration. What does that mean to a normal person? Well, the mirror was still a perfect smooth curve, but it had the wrong prescription. It wasn't the right curve. Uh, just like my eye is a, is a perfectly good eye, it's got a smooth curve to it, but it's the wrong prescription. Light doesn't come to a focus at the right spot. So how do we fix it? Well, we fix it with corrective lenses, the opposite prescription. But I remember the, the image started to come up, and right at the center was the star we were taking a picture of, and it was there. It was very bright and very sharp. That was good. But then as we waited, the picture got deeper and deeper, and all the faint stars started showing up, all just pinpoints of light, perfect focus. Then there was silence. Then suddenly, cheers, screams, corks from champagne bottles. The moment was even caught on NASA TV, I understand, because <laughs> it, it was a historic moment. We have made major breakthroughs in almost every field of astrophysics, from planetary nearby to our own galaxy to the very, very beginning of time. Uh, and to think that we mere humans are sitting here and, and getting close to understanding this incredible universe that's around us. And Hubble has been a key component in that over the last 25 years. And so we're celebrating the 25th anniversary this year. We have every expectation, the way things have been going, that Hubble should be able to make it till 2020 and maybe even beyond doing this great mission of scientific discovery. It's just the breadth of the scientific discoveries it's been able to make. Everything from the age of the universe, proving the existence of black holes, to discovering brand new things, like the universe is accelerating due to mysterious dark energy.
and I was holding on to a handrail looking up at the earth go by behind the Hubble. Uh, and it was a truly remarkable moment. But I did realize you know, how far away we were from the Earth's atmosphere, from our homes, uh, from our companions inside the space shuttle. And I wouldn't say that I felt a sense of loneliness, but a sense of awe you know, that we're doing these kind of things, that we're able to, to fix the Hubble, to orbit the Earth, to have a space shuttle. You should see a bright star as a sharp point of light, and that's what we've not gotten out of Hubble. In the older Hubble, before the repair, that bright star was spread out over a whole area like that. So the bright star did not look like a bright point of light. It was diffused out over this big area. To hear the screams and to see the faces when the first light the first popped on the monitor and they knew. All I had was that one moment, they knew it was fixed. But the real magic was that you could in fact go out and do that in the spaceflight environment in a suit because it was designed for that. That was the real, the real victory is that we made a machine you could work on. Humanity's always looked out there to the heavens to get the meaning of the hope of the life here. So you, you look out there for what, what's going on down here. You see it's that kind of, that kind of gap that you're, you're bridging. So people understood that about Hubble before we carried it up there. Um, 25 years, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's been, that's, that's quite an achievement. I'm glad it's worked for that long and, and been providing great science for most of that time and, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to more. I hope, I hope it lasts another 25. I think uh, Hubble has changed humanity by showing us what is out there. Yeah, the, the immenseness of the of the heavens, of the universe. Well, we, we knew it was a big place, but we didn't know the beauty of what was out there and just how big it is and, and how many other possibilities there are to find discoveries that we can't even imagine. It not only answered questions, but created questions. So I think it made a, it's made a great impact on, uh, on the whole world. And I can make the argument that it's the greatest scientific instrument ever built. What do you think of that? Um, but it was built, and so and and the, it was built by engineers. And I think it is a great combination of engineering because it's a magnificent machine, and science that provides this great data, this great Im these images, this this great look into the universe that astronomers can use to make discoveries. But that's only possible because of this engineering achievement of, of building it and repairing it in space. Releasing the telescope was um, not as bittersweet as you might imagine because um, you know that it's that that an incredible repair job has just been done, and by releasing it, it's getting sort of sent out there to to do its new mission. And we knew that there was going to be some pretty incredible uh, science return from that. Not only does the telescope have better capability than it had before, but better than they expected from the repair work um, that was planned. And so I think everyone is very excited about the, the science return that we'll be seeing in the next few years. Like that. The other thing I think is that it seems like Hubble is sort of, you know, sort of the comeback kid. It's hard for me to believe that it really truly was the last time people are going to see it. I, I feel like somebody somewhere is going to come up with a way to, well, if we did this and this and this, we could go back and, you know, so, so we'll see.
I think the end of the story has not been written yet.